the armored fighting vehicle in the form of the tank enables the enemy to bring his weapons forward, deliver his fire at close range, and so break down and penetrate the opposing defense. Here, you will see a section of light tanks advancing through a smoke screen, which they themselves have produced by throwing out smoke bombs. And here, you see a section of medium tanks moving forward to the attack under fire. How is the menace of the tank to be met? The answer lies in weapons of the defense, which will penetrate the armor of the tank and knock it out. To ensure that the enemy tank is out of action, a direct hit is necessary, as this disables the crew of the tank, bringing it to a standstill and silencing its guns. The bursting of HE shells near the tank, though causing possible damage to the track and tank, does not necessarily silence the fire. One type of defensive weapon is the two-pounder anti-tank gun, which you see being towed by the 1500 weight truck. In this, the gun detachment, ammunition, and necessary stores travel. It travels well over reasonably level ground. This series of films introduces this weapon to you, shows you how it works and how it is handled. Here, it is being brought into action and mounted on its pedestal. You will notice how easily and quickly the wheels come off. Later on in another part of this film, you will see the detailed drill of how this is done. There it is on its pedestal mounting. And here is the gun firing. Remarkably steady, isn't it? Number three is taking aim and laying on his target using the traversing and elevating hand wheels. Notice here the action of the recoil and the forward movement of the gun which ejects the empty case. A high rate of fire can be maintained, up to 20 aimed rounds a minute. And here is the equipment being taken out of action. It is first prepared for travelling. The wheels are put on. and it is ready to be towed away by the truck, which has been waiting nearby under cover. You want young and active men for this job. This team is all sound majors. Now the truck is there, the gun is hooked up, and away it goes. Here is another way of coming into action when there isn't time to mount the gun on its pedestal. This is called emergency action. The wheels are not taken off, but notice again here how steady it is when it is firing. On good holding ground, the equipment hardly moves. Here it is, coming out of action from the emergency action position. Both into and out of action in this way take very little time, under half a minute with a well-trained team. Let us just see again some of the targets the gun can engage. At ranges up to 1300 yards, the gun is very effective. A direct hit with the armor-piercing properties of the shell will do the trick. We use the gun against this sort of target. Or this sort.
or this sort. But certainly not against this sort. It may have occurred to you that the gun must appear very obvious to the enemy when it is brought into action in the open. It is conspicuous. So naturally, we do our best to hide the gun. Here it is, concealed by the foliage of some trees as well as camouflage netting. Now it won't be so easy to find. The gun detachment is, of course, the other side of the shield and completely hidden. Let them all come. The parts which follow will show you how the gun works and the drill duties of the detachment. This is the normal action position of the gun. In this position it is steady and can produce extremely accurate fire. The steadiness is obtained from the three point support. One, two, three. The low center of gravity. The comparatively long recoil, some 20 inches. the length of the legs and the weight of the equipment which is 16 and a quarter hundred weights. Now to show you how to traverse the gun. Here is the number three of the detachment who fires the gun. He traverses it by the traversing hand wheel which is in his left hand. One turn of this gives a traverse of three degrees. If he depresses the right foot pedal, a high gear is engaged and one turn of the hand wheel gives 20 degrees of traverse. Let us look at this from the front. Here we see one turn giving three degrees. Or by using the foot pedal, one turn giving 20 degrees. An added advantage is that the gun has an all-round traverse of 360 degrees. Now to elevate and depress. This is done by the elevating hand wheel in the right hand of the layer. Watch the barrel. Elevation. Depression. Let us see how this hand wheel is controlled. This is it. Watch the barrel. Elevation. Depression. Notice also the association of the hand wheel with the telescope, which is by the eye of the number three. This moves in conjunction with the barrel. Watch the telescope. Elevation. Depression. Now to load. The gun is loaded by the number two. Remember, you saw him loading the gun in the firing picture. He first opens the breech using the lever breech mechanism. He takes a round, removes the clip, places it in the breech, and with his fingers extended, he pushes it home. This, as you see, automatically closes the breech. Now to fire the gun. This is done by depressing the left foot pedal. This releases the striker, which goes forward and fires the round. Watch the striker. Once again. In the event of breakdown to the foot pedal firing mechanism, the gun can be fired by either of the emergency firing levers the front one by the number three, or the rear one by the number one. 
Now for the sites. There are three. The training site, used by the number one, to put the target which he wishes to engage into the field of view of the telescope. The telescopic site, with its range drum on top. This is used by number three. Looking into the telescope, this is what he sees. Two crosswires, a horizontal crosswire and a vertical crosswire. On the horizontal crosswire are marked divisions called graticules, which are three oh minutes apart. These are used for aiming off in front of a moving target. The amount of aim off for movement being calculated from the vertical crosswire. On the left, you see the two pounder range scale. Take no notice of the figures on the right. By using the range drum on the telescope, the horizontal crosswire is moved opposite the range to the target, estimated by number one. For example, this range is 1,200 yards. The range drum is being turned from right to left by the number three, till the horizontal wire cuts the 1,200 yard scale. As an example, a tank moving directly across your front from right to left at 12 miles an hour requires a lead of one graticule. The correct aim is with the horizontal crosswire on the ground line and the appropriate graticule on the nose of the tank. This is laid by number three, using the elevating and traversing hand wheels. If the tank was moving diagonally across your front, the aim off or lead would be halved. If the tank was stationary, the aim would be the junction of the vertical and horizontal crosswires laid on the centre of the tank. There it is. This is the open site, used in case of damage to the telescope. The shield must be down. It has a normal back site and foresight. When on wheels, the gun has a limited traverse, 14 degrees to the left and 9 degrees to the right. This traverse is limited by the shield coming against the wheels. Should a larger traverse be required, it is done by the number one, using the hand spike and moving the trail leg the requisite distance right or left. The ammunition. There are two types of cartridge used with the anti-tank gun. The service full charge cartridge and the flat nose practice cartridge. The shell itself weighs two pounds, six ounces, is armor piercing and designed to burst after penetration. In the practice cartridge, the shell is solid and flat nosed. Both have a tracer fuse. On the equipment itself is carried 32 rounds of ammunition, 16 rounds in the emergency ammunition box and 16 rounds in two containers strapped to the shield. On the top of the emergency ammunition box is fitted the toolbox. The remaining ammunition is carried on the truck in 12 containers, making a total of 96 rounds. Each container holds eight rounds. containers are kept in position by rubber straps. Also in the back of the truck are carried four of the gun numbers. Number three, the layer in the offside rear seat. Number two, the loader in the near side rear seat. Numbers four and five, ammunition numbers. In front of the truck is the driver. Beside him, the number one. Having shown you various aspects of the gun, we will now study the detail of the drill more closely. Here is the drill complete. 
the finished article. Number one, ordered halt action left two containers. Thirty-five seconds into action. Good going. Let us now examine the detailed procedure of each gun number to mount the gun on its pedestal. Number one, orders halt, action left, two containers. Numbers one, two and three, jump from the truck. Numbers two and three, unhook the trail from the truck, lure it to the ground, and number three orders drive on. Numbers two and three, raise and lock the shield. Number one, removes the hand spike, releases the elevating lock, and depresses the gun to point blank. Numbers two and three, open and lock the front legs. Number three, takes the hand spike from number one, and inserts it in the socket of the offside leg. Assisted by number two, he lifts and lures when ordered. Number one orders lift, unlocks and removes the wheel, inserts the protector cap and orders lower. Numbers one, two and three move to the near side and repeat the procedure. Number three releases the traversing lock, pulls down the traversing handle shaft and occupies the seat. <coughs> Number two opens the breech. Number one raises the training site and takes up his position behind number three. Numbers four and five remove the amount of ammunition ordered from the truck. Number five places it in a convenient position by the gun. The gun is traversed in the required direction. It is loaded on the word of command on by number one. So much for coming into action. Now for the cease firing. Here is the team taking the gun out of action. It takes 45 seconds to the time the truck drives off. So you see, it does not take long to bring the gun into and out of action on its pedestal. Once again, let us examine the actual duties of each gun number. Number one, signals for the truck. The gun is traversed to its approximate traveling position. And number one, orders cease firing. Number three, vacates the seat, applies the traversing lock, elevates the gun, and locks the elevating wheel. Number one, lures the training site and traverses the gun to its traveling position. Number two, closes the breech and eases the striker forward. The truck 
returns to the gun position. Numbers four and five collect and replace the ammunition. Numbers one, two, and three take up position on the handspike. Number one orders lift, removes and houses the protector cap, replaces and locks the wheel, and orders lower. They move to the offside and repeat the procedure. Number one takes the hand spike from number three and replaces it on the trail leg. Numbers two and three fold up and secure the front legs. Lower and lock the shield. Assisted by number one, they hook the trail to the truck and they mount. Number one ensures the equipment is correct for travelling and occupies his seat. The truck drives off. As you saw earlier on, the gun can be fired off its wheels. To bring it into action in this position, it is obviously quicker. But this position should only be used when it is impossible to mount the gun on its pedestal. The accuracy of the gun is very much better when firing off pedestal. Here it is, emergency action left. And now for the detail. We show you the detail of the drill in each case to bring out the necessity for a trained team working together. Number one orders halt, emergency action left. Numbers one, two and three jump from the truck. Numbers two and three unhook the trail from the truck and swing it in the required direction. Number three, orders drive off. Number three, releases the traversing lock, the elevating lock, and depresses the gun to point blank. He then occupies his seat. Number two, assisted by number three, raises and locks the shield. Number two, opens the breech. The emergency ammunition box takes out a rod. Number one, removes the hand spike and inserts it in the socket of the trail leg. Number two loads on the word of command on by number one. Now to come out of action. It takes, as you see, very little time to come into and out of action off wheels. 15 seconds into action and 25 seconds out of action. And once again, the detail. Number one, signals for the truck and orders cease firing. Number three, vacates his seat, frees the traversing lock, elevates the gun, and locks it. Number two, returns the ammunition to the emergency ammunition box, closes it, closes the breech, and eases the striker forward. Numbers two and three, lower the shield. Number one traverses the gun until the traversing lock engages and replaces the hand spike. Numbers two and three hook the trail to the truck and mount. Number one 
ensures the equipment is correct for travelling and occupies his seat. The truck drives off. There are two more interesting features in connection with this gun. The manhandling capabilities and using camouflage. It is possible to manhandle the gun over short distances and over fairly good going with only three men. This may be necessary to avoid bringing the truck to an exposed position. For this, they use a manhandling T-bar. It consists of a handspike, a crosshook, and a crossbar. The crosshook is fitted to the handspike. And then the crossbar. There is the T-bar complete. The T-bar is fitted to the socket on the trail. Numbers two and three fit the harness. This consists of a webbed sling. They take up position on the T-bar, hook up, and assisted by number one, they take the weight. The team of three, ready to manhandle. Should the gun have to be manhandled over long distances, or over heavy or rough going, then we must get the numbers four and five to help. They hook drag ropes to the equipment, and here you see the team of five manhandling it. Let us take a look at the camouflage equipment and how useful this can be in assisting to conceal the gun in position. The gun is sighted against some natural background without using the camouflage. Though the background is good, the outline of the shield is easily detected. Notice the shine on the shield. By using the spider and netting, this outline is broken up. Into the net is garnished some of the local background. Notice here the gun being traversed without disturbing this camouflage equipment. And here is the actual camouflage equipment. It consists of a bracket and a spider umbrella. The bracket is fitted to the shield and screwed on. Then the spider umbrella is fitted to the bracket. Legs are opened out to any suitable position. In front, there are two short arms to keep the netting off the barrel when the gun is firing. The wire can be bent into any convenient position. And the gun can be traversed inside the spider without disturbing the legs. A piece of netting, 24 foot by 24, sufficiently large to cover the numbers 1, 2 and 3, is then placed over the equipment. This netting is garnished with strips of coloured scrim. This will perhaps show you 
that the well-trained anti-tank gunner has little to fear. Have you any questions? 